Hello and welcome. So in this episode we will be going over the upgrades for the upper arm of the next powered armoured exoskeleton prototype while also going over some of the many problems I've found with trying to use pauldrons on a powered armoured exoskeleton. So let's get into it. And I thought we'd sneak over to the phenomenal secret level episode on the Warhammer 40,000 universe as there is no greater pauldrons in any sci-fi universe than Warhammer with the Space Marines. Also because I did want to do a Power Armor Builder React video for this, but frankly it's too perfect and the only things I could really find is a bit of egregious use of reverse gripping a chainsaw and when he wipes his eye lens off with solid plate armoured fingertips, which naturally wouldn't really wipe anything off. But it does show rather beautifully the size of the pauldrons and the massive amount of protection that you get out of these pauldrons, while also showing the issue that I'm trying to highlight, which is when you have such a big pauldron, a thick pauldron, especially with the vertical pieces of armour running along the lip of the pauldron, what it means is you can't lift your arms up by your sides laterally without the edge of that pauldron basically hitting the helmet as you lift your arms up. It's also surprising how little you can lift your arms up before those pauldrons hit the helmet. Of course, in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, the pauldrons on Space Marines are basically on servo mounts that operate separately to the rest of the arm and the suits that do kind of move out the way. But in the real world, that's not particularly available. And I can hear you good people in the comments already saying, what about medieval armour? Which is what we'll go to next. So medieval armour, particularly those made in the 1500s, were massively crafted by the best craftsmen for the wealthiest of clientele all to provide the most protection possible with intricate overlapping plates down around the elbows, the back of the knees, all over. All of which typically had padding underneath with chain mail to add that extra level of protection. The issues I found with trying to use this type of armour as inspiration for my design is basically a few things. Mainly the first thing which is in thickness. So medieval armour is typically around 1mm to 3mm thick. I know it varies quite a lot between them. Whereas if you're going to make a composite armour out of Kevlar and ceramic, you're typically going to end up circa 20mm thick no matter what you do, especially if you add some padding and fixing points underneath as well. This means all of these intricate little pieces that overlap and fold into each other on medieval armour just don't work when you're making them 20mm thick. Even basic overlaps don't work because it just gets too bulky and too heavy very, very quickly. So a lot of that fascinating, fantastic craftsmanship that was in medieval armour just doesn't convert from that alone. The second point that is relevant to this video is how the armour actually attached in these medieval times to the wearer themselves. In that the armour was typically tied or strapped onto an armless doublet which the wearer wore underneath the armour, all of which were custom made for that person in particular. This then meant that pieces like the pauldrons, for example, would hang neatly, perfectly in place as designed and would have great amounts of movement in all directions while providing constant great coverage. This unfortunately doesn't convert if you are basically armouring an exoskeleton because in my case, I want all of the armour on the exoskeleton so none of it is on the actual wearer. This then highly complicates the issue of having a pauldron that moves completely freely and separately from the arms and from the chest plate while providing constant great coverage with great manoeuvrability. So to sum up, despite the fact that medieval armour was developed over hundreds of years by the finest craftsmen, because of the thickness of the armour and the attachment points themselves, there's just not that many usable design features that you can glean from this period armour design and use it on a powered armoured exoskeleton. So we'll move on to the designs that I did try and go over what I did find. Now quite a while ago with some cheap foam I did try some basic pauldron designs just to see what would give the best coverage and what might work. I even tried a round Space Marine design just to see what it provided and the answer to that is it does provide massive coverage but it essentially ends up the size of a chest plate by itself. So as you can imagine that doesn't really work. I tried to come up with various designs that could also be easily manufactured when it comes to actually making, the, making it out of armour itself with some of the designs having overlapping pieces of armour, but again, the bulk was just too great. So the pauldron design I ended up coming up with was basically almost a Roman-esque design where it has two big pauldrons that rotate over the top. There's two hinge points over the top which allow them to rotate up. This allows you to bring your arms up into the middle, while the gaps at the sides allow you to lift your arms up at the sides, through the sides of the pauldrons, and those gaps at the sides would be covered by the actual arm armour with the actuator, etc. These also attached to two brackets that attached to the exoskeleton, meaning they were completely off the weight of the wearer. 
These I still think were the best idea in general and provided the most coverage with the most usability. However, I came up with the biggest issue and an issue I kept coming back to over the design of the last prototype in general, and that is doorways. Now, I don't know what they are in America, but typically in the UK, an interior doorway is around two and a half feet wide. And if you can't fit through the one of those doorways, the whole thing's basically useless. And with me actually measuring myself, I think I'm about two foot, two inches wide. You can see how you really don't have much space either side of your shoulders to work with to actually comfortably get through a doorway. Which when I tried to wear the last prototype with these pauldrons, I found out very, very quickly that I couldn't fit through doorways at all. So I then went back and tried to cut the pauldrons down even more and more and more and more until they were narrow enough to physically fit through a doorway. And then I came up with the next issue, which kind of put the nail in the coffin for it. And that it's that no matter which way I tried to angle these pauldrons, when I lifted my arms up for up and forward, the pauldrons would essentially flare out and angle outwards, thereby increasing the width of the pauldrons and the suit at large, making it too wide for it to fit through a doorway. And again, it didn't matter how I seemed to angle these or cut these or put the hinges on, move the brackets in, I just kept having this issue over and over again. Which is why my plan moving forward is to not have pauldrons at all, but to have arm protection on the upper arm that goes up to where a pauldron would be. And while you're always going to have a gap around, say, the inside of the front belt, you can at least shape the upper arm armour to basically close all of this gap up when the arms are raised as such. I also intend on putting in armoured poncho over the top as well to help add some added protection, but I think this is the best method of doing it. And now I'll just show you the final thing that I've got to bear in mind, which is surprising the impact it has. So if we go over to the Ruffo prototype, you'll see these acrylic plates I did make after taking the old pauldrons off, just to simulate how big I can actually make these upper arms without coming into contact with the following problem, which is if the upper arms are too big, then when you lift your arms, you then come into contact with the chest plate or with the helmet, like with the Space Marines that I mentioned earlier. There's frankly very little you can really do about this apart from just trying to make the upper arm as tight as possible, particularly around the actuators. So with those parameters being set, we're going to go into Fusion 360 and see what we can do. So here is the old basic CAD design for the upper arm. Now I know exactly the size and shape of the actuator. I'll be bridging these two pieces across the top and creating the correct shape in the middle. I'm going to then reshape this curve a little bit, make it fit the arm better and angle it in towards the elbow better as well. I'll also be smoothing off the edges and making sure it fits well with the modified forearm piece that was made in the previous video. I'll also add in some holes for attachment points for a actuator cover for the elbow. And while I'm at it, I'm going to try and make some details onto it to make it look more interesting from the aesthetics point of view. And lastly, I'll be adding a fairly beefy cover to both cover the actuator and provide extra protection for the user. And here we have that forearm from the previous video, as well as mock actuators and mock exoskeleton parts. So now we can add in the new upper arm piece and see what it looks like. And there we go. You can see it's now bridged across the top. We've got a nice hole for the actuator to go in with a bit of space to work in. And it's also fairly well curved all around the sides allowing it to fit nicely against the arm when you rotate it round, while giving your arm enough movement to fully function. Next, we'll add that top cover, which especially with the aesthetics applied, I do think it's come out pretty well. I've tried to keep the shape pretty simple so it will be easy to manufacture. All of what you see here, of course, just being the casing that the arm will be laid into. For the aesthetics of the main upper arm piece, I've put those lines that kind of line up with the fist extension on the forearm piece. As well as I'm having a go at replicating some of the hash lines that are on the forearm piece on the upper arm, particularly on the tricep area, with a little union jack in the middle of the lines. As for the cover itself, I was trying to think of what type of iconography I could add to it, and in the end I decided to go for a bit of a blend of the SPQR Roman. So I've got the laurels merged with the stator of a Brussels motor symbol, with a microcontroller processor in the middle. And then the lines on the outside representing the wings of the SPQR logo. Now I've waffled on for long enough, we'll get this shelled out and get it printed. After only one failed attempt on the old Corelli, we have the upper arm piece printed. You can see I haven't been bothered to clean it up yet. Surprise, surprise. Try and get a good angle of it. It has turned out pretty well, to be fair. Got the bolt holes for the elbow 
actuator cover when ready. And here we have the top cover. The laurels have come out pretty well. Of course, does need cleaning up, but pretty pleased in general. We've got the bolt holes to attach it with. What I will also add is we've got this top plate, which can be armed underneath, but also it helps to stop rain from getting in while the bottom is open. So rain, debris, anything else can fall out and not get stuck in the actuator or any of the exoskeleton mechanism. So we'll get them put together, see how it looks. And finally, we have it all together, albeit just lightly bolted together with the 3D printer brackets and a piece of old actuator. The only thing that didn't quite come out right was the hash lines on the tricep area. For some reason, they wouldn't cam right, so I ended up getting rid of them for this prototype, but I'm probably going to add them back in in the future. But you can see how well all this fits together around the cover area and how neat it all goes together around the elbow as well. So overall, pretty pleased. And that about brings us to the end of the video and the end of the current arm modifications to do. I certainly think it's a marked improvement over the old one. I'm quite confident you've got better mobility and movement across the board with as much coverage as possible without making the suit too wide to fit through a doorway. You can kind of see how snug it will fit. While maybe there's future modifications I can make, I seriously doubt I'm going to get it much better than this given those parameters that I set earlier. So next up on these modifications will be the legs. I'll probably be doing the shin and the thigh together because there's probably not enough modifications in a single piece to fill a video. I am getting closer and closer to a final actuator, so there will be a video for that at some point, like I keep saying. So if you'd like to follow along, please like and subscribe for the next video. There's a Patreon below with some random designs in it. And lastly, I hope you have a great day and a great new year.